as I promised, I'm going to show you the items that I put in my small guided reading group binder. Um, if you are not a part of the Facebook group, go ahead and go to Facebook and search for Resilience Helping Teachers Bounce Back. Now, I'm going to attempt to video in five minutes or less because I just really don't like long videos. So here goes nothing. Um, one thing that I have in the binder are the dividers. Sometimes when students come to school, they bring the dividers and there are extra. And so I make sure that I hold on to these so that each child can have their own divider within the binder. If you do not have the dividers and your school provides you with these folders, you can simply cut them in half, hole punch them, and then you can write the student's name on the side and that will also serve as a divider. Here, just loose leaf paper. Here's a form that I use to communicate with parents um, to let them know what I have observed and the parents receive a copy of that once a week if it's a perfect world. They sign that copy, send it back. I make a copy to keep inside the binder and they get one to keep at home for their files. Of course, these um, boxes here uh, just for me to take notes. I just put the student's name right here on the top and I might put the title of the book but this whole entire page is only for one scholar I do not put several students on the same sheet just in case I have to take this information and share it with someone else I only have that one scholars information there of course you'll need um, markers pens a lot of sticky notes um, Right here, we use journeys. So in our journeys books, they also give us um, these forms to use with the level books. So just in case I want to assign an extension activity when the students have finished reading with me, I might say, OK, well, I'm going to give you these sheets and you're going to go to a designated area. and You have three to four minutes to complete the sheet. They'll turn these back into me and I'll keep these in the section with their names for a quick um, quiz or an assessment. Also, I try and keep um, running records inside the book. So if I feel that a student is ready to move to the next level, I already have blank running records within the binder. Um, I like to keep this on my clipboard. This is also um, in the webinar. I put a link for this in the webinar. So look out for the webinars that I host about small guided reading groups. You can get to link the link to that. And that's just basically telling you uh, for the early emergent reader, different strategies for the teacher to use and then prompts to help the students. Okay. Um, over here, as you can see, I just took um, pocket folders. I tore the pocket portion off. I hit it with the three ring binder um, hole punch. And um, in the beginning, just like I stated in my webinar, I label my groups three, six, nines, and twelves to correlate with the minute hand so that I will remain um, Oh, so I can stay on track and do 15 minutes with each group. And I try to see four groups a day. Um, and they come to me when the long hand is on the three, six, nine, or 12. Later on in the year, um, they come up with their own names for their groups. Um, the groups change. Uh, well, let's, the groups change only because students um, make it to different levels. And so the students might change to different groups, let's say that. And then um, just a quick look at my clipboard, something I might have on my clipboard. Um, just a little prompt of what to say. Here's another version where you can just um, already make a couple of copies of these and um, already have your engaging question and know what you're going to ask. So kind of like a little script that you can use. Um, and so, yeah, that's all I have.